Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over some specialized attributes you would use for your form elements. Okay, so I've already created this form, and you can grab this demo page. If you look in the video description down there, you'll see a link to the demo file. So you can check this out live and see how it's looking, view the source code. What I want to focus on now, though, are attributes that I might use in here. And some of these are old and some of these are new. Let me jump over to my editor. And I'm looking at the section here. Let me kind of focus on this. I'm looking at my basic text boxes that I created a little bit earlier. It's a standard form, set of form tags, method attribute, action attribute. And I've got a couple of text boxes in there, very standard things. Let me show this first one here to you. Now when I go to my web page and I refresh, you don't really know where my cursor is. And if I just start typing, you don't know where I'm typing, okay? So what I want to do is I want to activate my first form element as soon as someone gets to the web page. And this is what I would do certainly on an order form page or a contact page, something like that. Really easy to do. Inside of the input tag, I'll simply put the auto focus attribute. This is a new HTML5 attribute, really nice, really simple, auto focus. And if a, someone goes to a browser where it doesn't work, it's not a major deal. So I type autofocus inside the input tag. And of course, you would only do this for one input on your form. So now when I head over to my browser, watch when I refresh, you're going to see my insertion point show up right inside of my first name box. When I refresh, there's my insertion point. So when I start typing, text is right in there. So that's autofocus. Now one of the other ones I want to check out is max length. Max length has actually been around for a long time. And I'll jump down here to my password and I'll stick it in here. So I'll put in a max length, if I spell it, and I'll just hit tab. And I'm going to put in a small number first just so you, so you can see it. I'll do max length of 4. Go ahead and save that. Head back over to my browser, refresh. So now when I go to the password box, I'm prevented from typing in more than four characters. So that's a pretty nice one. You might do this in a lot of fields, especially important if you know that the database that's going to be receiving data has maybe some limitations on characters. So for instance, if you know that you've got a first name field in your database that accepts only 25 characters, you might as well limit those 25 characters on the form input that accepts the data. So something to keep in mind. So we've got um, autofocus, which is great. Put that on your first form field, but I would only do that if the web page's sole purpose was a form. Quick example, you know, if I'm over at the advanced search on Flickr, then I want to have that form activated. If I'm over at the contact form on Zappos, I want that form activated right away. Okay. So back over to the code. Now one of the other ones I want to check out is required. You're probably going to like this one a lot. So basically the way I have my basic text boxes form set up right now, let me jump back over here, web forms refresh, is that it's possible for somebody just to click send the form and of course it's looking for my server which is non-existent, my, my server processing script. Don't have that. But what I can do is I can put the attribute required and I'll do it for both of these right inside of the input tags. And that little feature right there, wow, that's so nice because we used to have to do this with JavaScript all the time. Now when I go to, oops, let me refresh. Now when I go to hit send form, my browser is going to tell me that I need to fill out this form. And sure enough, I need to put in my information and I hit send form again. Now I got to fill out this other one too. There we go. And then I can finally send form and I'll do that. Now this isn't necessarily the best form validation method, but it's new and it's kind of cool. And each browser will do something slightly different. Some browsers might highlight the border and things like that. Let me show you that again. Now, what I don't like about this, of course, is it's only showing me one error at a time. Um, so this is why we'd still want to do this with some JavaScript where we start to look for multiple mistakes and go ahead and alert the customer right away that they have multiple things that they need to do to get that form completed correctly. But it's still kind of cool and let's keep our eyes out for it. Here's another great one we used to always have to use JavaScript for. Uh, placeholder. So let's see, I think I'll come down here to this section and I'll go to my telephone number and I'm going to put in placeholder equals, and I'm going to do that classic 555 dash 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, I like this one a lot. So now when I save this, head over to my browser and refresh, you'll see that there is some mock content. 
just giving the user a little bit more instruction on what they're supposed to enter. Really useful too on something like URL. I could have a placeholder equals um, yoursite.com just to let them know that I'm expecting that full email address. Probably I also want them to type out that HTTP colon also, okay? So that's the placeholder, and it's really nice. And of course, once a person starts typing in here, the placeholder goes away. Doesn't do form validation, we'd still have to use our scripting and stuff for that, but it's a nice option to give users a little bit more instruction on how they should fill out that form. So that takes care of that one. Now, last but not least, in fact, maybe even more important, this is an older one too, it's the name attribute. Really, all of my forms should also have a name attribute. So I could do something like name equals fname, and uh, name equals lname. I might as well use the same value that is inside of my, uh, that basically that describes the form. If I was using ID attributes, four attributes for labels and things like that, I'd probably be doing this. Name equals F name, name equals L name. When this form is submitted to the server, the data is going to be presented as F name equals and then whatever the person typed in, or L name equals whatever the person typed in. Now I had to use the name attribute back on my radio buttons in order to group them. So if I did something like this and I chose standard shipping, which is ST, value ST, the, uh, the, the script would get the data shipping equals ST. And if I did this for my checkbox options, the script, and if I chose several of these, it would get options equals EN, ampersand, options equals WR, ampersand, options equals CA for gift card. So the name attribute is actually gonna end up showing up in all of your form fields. Oh, that's right, and I also stuck it in my select tag too. So I even have this. So if I was choosing the state of Florida for my select menu, I would get name equals value or state equals FL. Okay, So name attribute is important when it's submitted. But some of those new ones that I'd like you to start using, certainly autofocus, required, and a placeholder are very nice. Max length to prevent the user from typing in more characters than what you're even going to accept.